Hey guys, it's Dave from Royce, and today I'm going to show you how to level up your networking code with the observer pattern. So why would you want to do this? Well, currently in Godot's current setup, if you want an RPC and the server and client are both separated like we did in the last video, th that code will have to be on both scripts. And so while this will work, so I'll just show that it'll work, we'll just launch our server and then launch our client. I can send a message to the ser I can send a message to the client, but there's a problem. What if our client is in a different scene tree? And what I mean by that is I can go into our script here and in our network manager, I can say the client will be in get child zero dot add child client. And so now when we try and run our network manager, and our server, we're not going to get that data. So like the server here is saying it's been pressed, sending the data, the client's not receiving it. It does not know where to send that data. So we can use the observer pattern to fix this problem. The observer pattern is essentially a way to say when a function is called, send out anything listening to it, call all the functions that are listening to it. And so I'm going to show you what I mean by that. So let's create a shared folder. Oops, create a shared folder. And I'm going to call this shared. And I'm going to create a new script. And I'm going to keep it C sharp. And I'm going to call this script RPC list. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you can hear, you can see the errors here that the node wasn't found when we did that when we were sending the data. Okay, so now let's open our RPC list and add a few things to our script. First off, we're gonna define a delegate. A delegate is, a, is an observer pattern and essentially when we call a delegate, anything registered to the delegate will be called as well. If you don't know what that means, don't worry, I'll explain it in the future. So, or I'll show it off. Public delegate, void, and I'm gonna call this RPC type, and I'm gonna make it a generic type item. Essentially, what this means, what this RPC type means, is that I can hand anything into the RPC type. So like, if we wanted like to hand in two parameters, we could do another one, public delegate, void, we could do an overload RPC type, uh, t, t1, and t2, and then take in two parameters, t1, or T1, item 1, T2, item 2. And we can hand in two parameters. Unfortunately, this isn't really scalable, but I don't really know a better solution to this than writing out however many parameters you need. So let's move our RPC to our script. So on the client, we'll just take the RPC and we'll paste it. We won't be doing any logic within this RPC. So now that it's here, we need to create our RPC for this. So public RPC type. Ah, sorry, RPC type string, we because we want to take in a string here. And we will say RPC say hello to client. And now for this, we can just say RPC say hello to client dot invoke. And pass in the message that we are given in our RPC. What this invoke will do is it will call any method that is currently listening to the RPC client delegate. So how do we get it to listen? Well, we can go into our client and we can create a function to essentially say, hello. So we can do private void and I'm just gonna call this server said hello and it's gonna take in a string and we're gonna call it message. So if you noticed here, it takes in a string and passes a string. This is what's gonna be called. And now we're just gonna gd.print the string we were given. 
message. And so now we need to have our server said hello, listening to RPC said hello to client. So we can do, so we can call it network manager dot instance because our network manager is currently an instance and this will be a child of the network manager. Dot instance. Um, actually, I need to do this first. All right. Public RPC list. And I'm just going to call it RPC list. Equals new RPC list. And we're just going to add a child. Add child. RPC list. Yeah. Now it's in our. Now it's in our scene tree. So we can. We can access that by doing network manager dot instance dot RPC list dot um, client RPC say hello to client less equals and whatever our function name is here. So server said hello. Great, but now we need a function for our RPC list to send variables. So let's define our own RPC sending function. Public void, send RPC, long ID, string, or actually, this is just going to be a generic RPC. So string, RPC name, and then params, variant, args. If you don't know what params means, it means taking any number of parameters after. So for example, we could call our send RPC and we could give it the RPC name of something like RPC say hello to client. And then we can just give it as many parameters as we want. So like string one, string one, a string two or string a two S two. This will all be taken in into the RPC list. And essentially, all this is going to do is it's going to call RPC, RPC name, and pass in arcs. That's all it's going to do. So let's do an overload for this function to allow RPC IDs as well. So public void, send RPC, long ID, string RPC name, params, variant, args. And if you don't know what a variant type is, it's essentially what Godot uses for like strings, string, ints, vector threes. It's Godot's kind of own data types. So this just accepts all of Godot's own data types. And now we can send an RPC ID, pass in the ID, the RPC name, and the arguments that were given to us. So this will call all the RP this will call the RPCs and we only have to call send RPC and it'll just know based off what we pass in, how many parameters we pass in, as to which one to call. So let's try this out. So we have our add child RPC list. So let's say the server wants to call this RPC. So gd.print is action just pressed. We will call network manager dot instance dot RPC list uh, dot send RPC and we're going to pass in the RPC we want to call. So in our case, it'll be RPC say hello to client. So let's just put this into a string and then pass in the message we want to send. Server says Hello. Again. There we go. Let's change it up. Now, because we're already listening to this, it'll it should run the logic on our RPC server. So let's try this out. Let's build our server. Now we can run it. And now we can run our client. And I can send a message on the server. And again, this will work no matter what. 
because if I go into our network manager and I say add get child zero dot get child zero for our client, if you remember this didn't work before, I can just relaunch our client and the server will always say hello. This is a way to make sure your RPCs can always get through to the client and our separation is still there because no logic will ever be run in the RPC list. Well, thank you guys so much for watching this video. If this helped you guys, feel free to give it a like and subscribe. I'll see you guys next time.